What's going on, Jello family? In today's video, we're going to go over the top 10 terms program managers use. For those of you curious who I am, my name is Angelo Carlos. I'm a UCLA MBA, a graduate of the number one public school in the world, UCLA Anderson School of Business, as well as I've been a program manager for bank companies like Meta and Google Cloud, as well as I've worked at Airbnb as a program manager. So huge tech background, um, especially within the program management side of things. And in this video, we're going to go over the top 10 terms program managers use. I've had a bevy of, of experience in program management. So I want to show you guys the terms that you use on a daily basis and you need to understand to really excel in your career as a program manager. First up, we have a scope. And scope refers to the boundaries of a project, what we'll be delivering and what we don't and will not need to know. So essentially, a scope is like whenever senior leadership reaches out to you, your project or program is going to have certain things you need to do and you want to understand the whole scope of things right and scope is more or less what will be relevant for your project what won't be relevant so at google if i was working on say a land acquisition uh, portion of a project or program and my job was just really acquire the land my scope would be just working with finance working with the real estate team working with the uh, corporate approvals team it wouldn't be working with, the, say, like a team on the engineering side of things. That's not in scope. That's a different team's um, job to really work on the engineering side when it comes to kind of building the software or data to acquire the, the land. So that's kind of what scope is, just really looking at what is relevant to your project or program and defining the scope of that, right? Whatever is relevant to you is in your scope. Next, we have milestone. Milestone is... A significant point in the project timeline and it marks a major release or accomplishment of a critical deliverable. It's essentially the checkpoint you have for your certain project or program. So for every project or program, you will have milestones. And when you think of milestones, milestones is, is just like a major accomplishment, right? So for example, at Meta, I had to work on the SMS side of things, like working with um, kind of certain vendors to make sure that we had a lower SMS rate. One major milestone for us was negotiating five five vendors to make sure we lowered the SMS rate, which is just how um, how much we're being charged to send a text message to our users by about 20%. So if we were able to lower the SMS rate by 20% for five of our vendors and we get that accomplished, that was a major milestone. In your project or program, you will always have several major milestones. And it's important you know what those major milestones are. The reason you need to know what they are is because that's how you can communicate to your leadership. That's how you can communicate to your team that we are accomplishing the task at hand and it is successful because we have hit this major milestone of a completion. And it's really critical for this for, for your, your deliverables. Your deliverables is basically, I'll go into it a bit later, but it's kind of like whenever you hit a milestone, you hit it for that deliverable and you are showing the success within that project or program. So take a look at that milestone. The third term that we use a lot is stakeholder. Stakeholder is anyone affected by the project. It's include members, clients, sponsors, or end users. And managing stakeholder expectations is key to successful project. What does that mean? So anyone you work with, right? So say at Google, I was working heavily with the engineering team when I was working on the hardware part. I was working with the financing when I needed to get approval or getting financing for that hardware part. And I was working with the legal team to kind of make sure that we were in 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 tune with all of Google's legal requirements, right? Those people I work with, those are defined as stakeholders. Um, essentially, stakeholders are just people you work with on a daily basis that are essential for the project to succeed. Those are your stakeholders. So keep that in mind. Stakeholders are very, very important. Next, you have another term called risk management. And this involves identifying, assessing, and prioritizing risk, followed by coordinated efforts to minimize, monitor, and control profitability of unfortunate events. So risks. Risks are extremely important when it comes to project and program management. The reason they're super important is because whenever you have a project, it could fail if there is a certain risk associated with it, right? So risk management is huge for project and program management. When it comes to identifying risk, you have to see whatever major milestone, whatever major task you have, what is a risk that will make sure that will, that will kind of show that we may fail, right? So for Google, going back to the land acquisition example, when you were trying to acquire land, one risk management portion was it as us not getting approval from legal. 
So you need to get approval from legal to buy or purchase land. And if we don't get that approval from legal, then there is a huge risk for us not to acquire that land and can't do the deal. So that is one thing you need to identify all your products or programs, risk management. Look at the risk associated with whatever you're doing. And if there's a risk involved, how can we mitigate that risk? Who do we need to reach out to? What team does we need to work with? How do we make sure that this risk isn't going to stop us from achieving this certain end outcome or goal? All right, next we have deliverable. Deliverable is a tangible good or service or product that we need to produce or end users. Deliverable can just really mean something we need to get done for a certain team if you're working internally or um, if you're working externally, what product do we need to pr provide for someone, right? For me, as a program manager working internally, your deliverables are also kind of like reports. I had a lot of reports for, for Meta, right? Setting up those reports to senior leaders, um, drafting those reports. Those were deliverables I need to hit on a daily basis. So whenever you're working as a program project manager, you will have a lot of deliverables on top of the project and program you're managing. This is just to show the, the team that, hey, we're successful, we're doing this report, we're doing that report. This is the results for it. So that is one thing you have. It's called deliverables. Make sure you understand that every time you work a project or program, you'll have a deliverable. All right. The sixth term we call we need is Gantt chart. Gantt chart is a type of bar chart that represents a project schedule and illustrates the start and finish dates of various elements within the project. So if you guys see my previous videos in project program management, these Gantt charts are really essential whenever you're using project or program management software. I use MS projects, we use Adobe Workfront, so many projects programs we have, and these Gantt charts represent your project schedule. So if you have a schedule, um, kind of lays out all your tasks, your deliverables, everything that you need to do, this Gantt chart will show you in kind of like a visual representation when this certain project, when this certain task is due. So look into Gantt charts. Gantt charts are really big when you're using project software, project management software. So learn about project management software, learn about Gantt charts, learn how to build one by, by building out your project management software. So take a look at that Gantt charts. They're really huge in project management and they just show you when something's gonna do, what's kind of dependent on what, and then when the various finish dates are for, for that. Seventh, we have budget. And budget outlines the estimated cost associated with the project and you really need to stay in budget when you're trying to build out a successful project, right? For, for companies you're, you're working on, right? Whenever you have a project or program, you may need to track spending. In a lot of work, um, work uh, management software for project management software, they track your budget for you, right? You can put how much it costs to buy something or the purchase order, whatever it may be. So you really need to maintain and stay within budget. Most project management jobs, some of them will require you to track budget. Some of them will just make sure you make sure the program is successful, especially for a bigger company. I noticed that Google, a lot of times, like if we had time budget, um, that was kind of associated with different project programs. So you need to really look at budget. If you're certain buying certain things for the project to be successful, if you're acquiring land, if you're working with certain teams, getting software development, budget is really important for you to stay on track and you need to monitor that or otherwise your um, senior leadership, your team will kind of be um, at fault for not staying and maintaining within budget. So really just learn the basics of finance and how much it costs to run a certain project, okay? All right. So next we have dependencies. This eighth term is called dependencies. And these are tasks that depend on the completion of other tasks. And you know, this helps identify and helps scheduling and resource allocation. So whenever you have a project or program, a lot of your tasks, a lot of your, um, your deliverables, whatever it may be, they will be dependent on completing a certain thing. So let me go back to Google. At Google, if I needed to acquire land, I needed approval of legal. So the, the dependency for the land acquisition was a legal approval process. That's one thing, right? So if we want to acquire land, it's dependent on getting approved by legal. So most of your projects, programs, or tasks, you will have dependencies. And these dependencies are very, very important. You need to achieve this and in order to achieve that. So if you look at the dependencies in the project, you really see this in the project or program management software. It's your dependencies on this project will be dependent on this task being achieved. So really make sure that you understand what all your tasks, your projects, whatever they may be, and make sure you're able to kind of identify which task is dependent on which task. So really, really work with your team, work with your whole 
to a whole staff to ensure that you understand the dependencies for each of these tasks. The ninth term we're going to go into is resource allocation. So resource allocation is the process of assigning and managing assets in a manner that supports the project goals. Resources include time, money, people, and equipment. So whenever you're doing a project or program, resource allocation really just refers to who and how am I going to kind of allocate my resources? Do I need to put more money with this team? Do I need more people staff for this task? Do I need more equipment for this task? And you're just going to really understand how to allocate your resources efficiently. When you allocate your resources efficiently, you're really able to make sure your project or program is successful. Same thing within Google. A lot of my projects depended on several other teams. I had to work with a lot of vendors, contractors. I had to work with a lot of um, external internal teammates. So I need to allocate resources efficiently. I need 10 people to work on that, five people to work on that, a team to work on this. And you need to really just be great with delegation and resource allocation. This will make your project or program successful. One person can't do everything. You need to really allocate everything to the right team, the right people. All right. Last but not least, we have change management. At Google, I ran the whole change management for the cloud infrastructure team. And this really refers to the tools to help people achieve your certain business outcome and guide people throughout the project. Because throughout your project or program, you will have a lot of updates, changes occurring, and you need to communicate that. Change management really occurs when you have updates to projects or programs. You're going to send out emails. You're going to host, uh, send out newsletters. You're going to host forums so people understand how the project's progressing, why it's changing, where we need to make it better, and how we can properly kind of show the team, show the organization that we've done X, Y, Z. This is what's going to happen now because um, it is called change management. I really refer to change management as kind of like marketing, marketing for yourself, letting people know that we've done all these things and this is going to change as a result of the project or program being successful or unsuccessful. All right, that's a wrap on the top 10 program manager terms that we all use. I hope you guys found this useful. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to work with me, please um, take a look at the link down below. You can book time to speak with me on program or project management. Also, I have a link to my school. School is kind of like going to be my my community where you can watch more project program management content. Um, right now, it's going to be it's going to be free for the community right now. Right as as we kind of grow this channel, as we kind of grow the YouTube. But as we get bigger, definitely we'll be starting charging for that. But right now, it's all free for you guys. So please take a look at the school link down below. Once again, my name is Angel Carlos. I am a UCLA MBA, which UCLA is the number one public school in the world, as well as I've worked at companies like Meta, Google, Airbnb, and Program and Project Management. So kind of been around the block trying to understand what Program and Project Management is. And my goal is just to really help you guys learn about this career and learn about um, all the amazing business um, and and project management things you need to know. And so that way you can excel your career. Because I'm not going to lie, when I started as a program project manager, not good. It was extremely hard. And these videos are meant to help you guys excel your career and not make the same mistakes I did. So love you, Jill fam. Have an amazing day. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.